for me. Amen. Amen. So somebody give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. The song said, today will be the best day of my life. Amen. 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 Because when you wake up every morning and you have breath in your body, the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. And I can't do nothing about what happened on yesterday. But right now, I can give God some praise for what he has done. Very quickly, I would like for those of you that have your Bibles, turn with me to a very familiar passage of Scripture. We're going to be in the uh, Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter, uh, verses 1 through 13. This should be very familiar. If you came up in Lincoln Park, you should know Matthew 5, 1 through 13, the B attitudes. Amen? Amen. Amen. And the Bible, King James Version, reads this, and you can see it on your screen. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into the mountain, and when he had set his disciples, came down unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Yes. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but the salt have lost its savor, wherein shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but can be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Amen? Amen. 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 Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, Amen. I have Amen. a new attitude. attitude. I have a new attitude. I have a new attitude. Uh, uh, Mother McCoy mentioned the 1980s when the women started giving $100 dues for Women's Day. In the 1980s, there was a popular song uh, out that some of you might have danced to when you won't at Lincoln Park by Miss Patti LaBelle says, I have a new attitude. That song was so popular, they even let her get a TV show called A New Attitude. A new attitude, a new attitude, it, it, it talked about changing your perception and your demeanor and how you respond yeah. to things in everyday life. Right. She, she, she talked about getting her hair done and nails pressed and all these things that she was about to get up and go do because whatever was bothering her before, she had to change her perspective on things. All right. Here we have Jesus teaching the multitude, and some people call this the church, uh, the, the, the Sermon on the Mount. Some people call this the Beatitudes, but Jesus was preaching and teaching something a little different to his disciples in the multitude. Uh, he found himself in this situation where he had to put a stamp on how he was going to change things as the status quo. He understood that... Uh, um, and let me say this with the, in, in, in emphatic position. He understood that morality cannot always separate you from the world. Why do you say that, preacher? Because simple morality has nothing to do with whether you get to heaven or not. You want me to prove it to you? Buddhists live better than some Christians. They don't lie. They don't drink. They don't steal. They don't do drugs. You got Muslims that live better than some Christians. They are. You got Hindus that live. The, uh, the Dalai Lama is up in the mountains doing nothing to nobody, sitting and praying all day. Guess what? We haven't met that part yet. We don't pray all day. We got to go to the mall. We got to go shopping. We got to go to the movies. It, morality... It's not the at all be all. I'm not saying you shouldn't be morally responsible, but what I'm saying to you is you cannot top yourself because you are moral. All right. 
<laughs> because my Bible lets me know that your morality is at what? As filthy rags in the sight of a holy God. So when Jesus came to certain on, Sermon on the Mount, he had to break up some things in their mind. Because before, they were living off the law. And you have to understand, if you try to live off the law, you came up short already because you can't keep the law. So he changed and he started doing some things that seemed peculiar and he preached some things. And I want to just bring out three quick points about what he preached on the Sermon in the Mount. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I got a new attitude. Uh, my first point is your strength is in your position. Uh, the first three blessed sayings address the humble nature that Christians should have. It starts with the poor in spirit. This is a confession of the man that understands that he is nothing without God. When you are blessed and you got poor in spirit, you understand that it don't matter what kind of clothes you got on your back, shoes you put on your feet. It wouldn't have happened if it wasn't a God that blessed you to have it. Ah, uh, when, 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 when you understand that you are nothing without him, you have a disposition to serve him correctly. Because when you start thinking that you done did something or did something or you was able to accomplish something, you have missed the mark. I remember it was in a Bible study that uh, Mother McCoy talked about stewardship. He said, guess what? You give back to God because the money that you have ain't yours in the first place. But we have to understand something. And then Jesus uh, made another statement in the second one. He said, blessed are they that mourn. Understanding that God, uh, understanding that you need God, and if you know that you're nothing without God, see the mourning that he's talking about is the mourning that happens after you have that understanding. Yeah. When you understand that you are nothing without God, you mourn the stuff that you want to do without God. See, some of us sit up here and tell half-truths when we testify. I was living in a miserable world of sin, and knowing that half of us won't miserable. <laughs> uh, I'm here to be transparent with you. I didn't go to the club to have a bad time. <laughs> I didn't go buy liquor not to get drunk. I was not miserable every time I was sinning. There was some fun in that. And what happens is, once I came to the knowledge that there's a better way to live, see, there's no good thing that dwells in the flesh. So once you start living right, your flesh starts to mourn the things that you used to do. I know y'all don't want to be transparent in here. I, I, I watch commercials sometimes. I, I remember what Bud Light tastes like. I, 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 my flesh mourns sometimes. And so what God is saying is, I want to bless you when you're mourning because you're doing right when you want to do wrong. You're blessed when you have a consciousness, I desire to do this, but my God won't let me do that. So blessed are they, I'm trying to tell you, he said blessed are they that mourn. I mourn sometimes. I, I, boy, they was talking about the, this stuff, and I be watching documentaries, they be talking about stuff, on, and I remember where I was when that happened. My flesh mourns. Thirdly, you must understand, blessed are the meek. Meekness is not something that you should shy away from. And meekness don't mean that you are a coward. Meekness don't mean that people are going to push you around. What meekness under, when you are meek, you understand, I can stand still and let the Lord fight my battles. Meekness does not mean that you are underneath or behind. What meekness says is, I don't have to worry about what people do to me. Because my Bible says, touch not my anointing and do my prophet. If you do something to me, I don't have to put hands on you because I have a God. You know, meekness says you don't have to clap back. You just have to live your best life. <laughs> so many times you try to put people in place and all they want to do is get you distracted from how you living. They want to get you involved in an argument so you get stop doing what you're doing. The way, best way to get somebody back is to keep being happy. Thank you. Point two as I move expeditiously as I can, it says, point two says, I just want to be white. The next four blessed discuss the attitude of righteousness. Jesus first 
uh, says, uh, the first one Jesus says is, those that thirst and hunger after righteousness shall be filled. This is a guarantee that God will move on our behalf if, we fo- if our focus is correct. Mother McCoy, it seemed like she was all in my subject. She said that if you ask for the money to give, God will give the money to give. Once you ask for the right thing, God is quicker to answer. The problem is we want to ask for stuff that may not be righteousness. We want to ask for stuff, you know, and and, and, let me be honest with you. If you, if women and men, if you're asking God to bless you with money so you can show out on Men's and Women's Day, I don't know if he's going to bless it for you. But if you're asking for money because you want to be diligent and you want to be righteous in your giving to the church, then you got a shot. But when we ask for things and when we live a certain way, God is just to give it to us. Why? Because we are the example of his power. And if we don't do right, he can't show his power the right way. That's why the Bible says that men may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Understand this. People know your business more than you think. They know you ain't supposed to live like you live, but they understand if you're living like that, there has to be a God somewhere. He goes and he talks about it. And I'm going to put my last one in. This is the biggest misconception that we have before I go to my clothes. He goes on and said, blessed are the peacemakers. And in the church, we uh, confuse that with peacekeepers. Keeping peace and making peace is two different things. When you keep peace, you just keep your mouth closed. When you make peace, you find a solution to turmoil. Uh-huh. The problem is we cannot get so addicted to drama that we forget that we are peacemakers. Amen. Peacemakers is saying sorry when you have nothing to be sorry about. Amen. Peacemaker is saying I'm going to give when you don't deserve to get got. Uh-huh. I want to be a peacemaker. See, when you're just a peacekeeper, all you're doing is watching the game. But when you're a peacemaker, when you're a peacekeeper, you're just watching it. When you're a peacemaker, you're in the game. Oh my God. You gotta be a peacemaker. Christians are not called just to keep the peace. Christians are called to make peace. I have to do it every day. You have to make peace. And what are you saying about making peace, preacher? Making peace is putting you second to put somebody else first. How do you do that? How do you do that? See, if we get quick caught up and worried about me, myself, and I, Uh and thinking about we, us, and them, Uh we can be all right. A peacemaker has power because it changes the atmosphere of chaos. A peacemaker has power because they get better as other people get worse. Oh my God, we cannot keep living our lives like a reality show. Going from one thing to get mad about to the other. Christians are so sensitive. Everything gets on your nerves. Can't do nothing. That get on my nerves. That really tick my ticker. My Bible says it gives you peace that surpasses all understanding. We should be able to walk and not be bothered by some stuff. Because guess what? The most stuff you bother by is the stuff that's just close to you. Amen. The bottom line is is that we have an obligation to be peacemakers. And that is even in our evangelism. Stop looking at the world like they ain't sinners. Man, like we shocked by people sinning. They had, the, they had the audacity. You had the audacity. Sin is sin. You ain't special because you got saved. He died for everybody. Shot because somebody ain't seen is sinning. Woo! Wow. She ain't saved. She's supposed to act like that. You're the one saved. You're supposed to act different. <laughs> but I'm off that house. Down to my third point. Remember, you are blessed. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm blessed. All right. The last two blessed. Discuss what happens if you can handle and have an attitude of the first seven. 
See, when you have and change your attitude and your disposition about things, you can walk around with some confidence that stuff just won't happen to you. The problem is our attitude sucks and we can't get to where we want to go. But when we change our attitude and understand that God has already given us the power to overcome these things and power to overcome what's going on against us, we'll be all right. See, we're so busy trying to avoid people from talking about you, you didn't understand what the Bible says. They're going to talk about you, but you're going to be blessed anyhow. Oh! We're so busy trying to prove a point that God has already settled. He's already called you blessed. He's already called you a royal priesthood. He's already called you above and not beneath. He's already called you a lender and not the borrower. So what are you fighting for? Woo! My God, my God, my God. Woo! See, see, I, I, I tell people, you got to live like you walking in a restaurant with a pocket full of money. See, I've been broke before, and I had to go to some restaurants and pay attention to the menu. But I had some money before, and I walked in the restaurant and said, whatever it is, I can buy. And that's how you have to live. Whatever it is, God can provide. Whatever it is, God will deliver. Whatever it is, God will bring me out. Whatever it is, God will fix it. See, when you understand that you're blessed, you won't get those bad attitudes. You'll have those B attitudes. The B's because I can be whatever God says I can be. I can do whatever God says I can do. I wish I had about two more people that says I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm abundantly blessed. Yeah. So, I got to get out of here, but I want you to understand that your attitude of bless can not only reside in how much money you have, your attitude of bless has to reside in the power that you serve. Woo, my God, my God. And because my God can do abundantly and exceedingly better than you can even imagine, you have to live like God can do something about your situation. Stop whining and crying about stuff that's small for God. Stop whining and crying about something that's small for God. Because guess what? He can handle it. And I'm so glad that we serve a God that he don't expect us to handle nothing. He said, come to me, all that are heavy laden. If you burn down, and I will give you rest. So that stuff that we have picked up along life's way, that mess. Now, some of y'all still connected to mess. Y'all don't want to say it. We don't pick up a whole lot of mess. But guess what? I'm so glad that we can trade in mess for a message. I'm so glad that we can trade in filth for favor. And I'm so glad that he can change our ashes to beauty. Jesus stood on that mountaintop and said, forget what you thought. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. And as long as you're connected to me, you are blessed. Pray my strength in the Lord. Lincoln Park Holiness Church is about loving people and helping community. Our main objective is winning souls. You are welcome to partner with us or help sponsor this ministry and broadcast with a donation. Please visit our website at lincolnparkchurch.com and click the Let's Give tab at the top of the screen. Feel free to leave comments. You can also download the Givelify app on your mobile phone and look for Lincoln Park Church. Cash app, cash tag, Lincoln Park CRF. We are located at 13 Heath Street in Raleigh, North Carolina. God bless you, and we look forward to you joining us next week on NFI Radio and Catch the Wave from the number one radio station reaching the world with gospel music and preaching.